Alright, lecture five on valuations of futures cash flow, time value for money. So, as usual, uh, consultation is via appointment from Monday at two to four. So you send me email if you have any issues. And uh, there's no Zoom for this week because uh, it's uh, gonna be our, <coughs> it's gonna be test on next week, all right? So after today's outcome, you'll be able to compute the future value of an investment made today, the present value of cash to be received as some futures date, the return on an investment, the number of period uh, that equates the present value and the future value given an interest rate, and you're about to solve value of money problem using formulas. Okay, so those of you who have a calculator, you may use the calculator. The outline will be future value on compounding and present value on discounting, future and present value of multiple cash flow. Valuing level cash flows, annuities and perpetuities, we'll do it next week on next week lecture. So first of all, we'll start with effects of compounding. So what is this compounding means? If it's a simple interest, interest earned only on the original principal, so it's not being compounded. But if it's being compounded, interest earned on principal and on interest received. So the interest that you receive depending on the frequency you could be compounding on a yearly basis on a monthly basis on a daily basis so interest will be also taken into consideration as a compounded interest in the following days on the following uh, compounding uh, period all right so it's an interest on interest kind of thing okay this is uh, something uh, that the bank will, will apply to you when you are taking a credit card you are using the credit card but this will also a uh, more standard way of saying it will be loan shark loan shark will have compounded interest these are some of the uh, formulas to count it. So if a simple interest, you use F V equal to PV plus PV multiplied by RT. RT means R is interest rate. T is number of period on your time. Whereas if a compound interest, it will be PV multiplied by one plus R power of T. So this is a simple example here on simple interest. So suppose you invest $1,000 for one year at 5% per year. What is the future value in one year? So replace the value into this uh, equation. So what do you do is, you put in 1,000 for one year at 5% per year. So your PV, okay, your PV is 1,000. Your R is 5%, so it's 0 0.05. And T is uh, one year, so one. All right, so replace it and you might get the formula for future value. So please try this. We have some discussion questions that we will do in our tutorial session next week. Compound interest. Interest is earned on principal and interest received, like we mentioned earlier on. Suppose you leave the money in for another year, how much will you have two years from now? So it's going compounded two times. So your T is two. So present value means the value of an amount to be received in the future. Okay? So the present value means the current value of an amount to be received in the future. Why is it worth less than the face value? All right, because of opportunity cost, time value for money, and due to risk and uncertainty, so discounted rate, time and risk. So all these things are being taken into consideration. All right. So present values, uh, how to call present value? You just replace the formula just now. PV equals to FE multiplied by one plus R power of T. Now you reverse it, okay? F, no, sorry, FE equals PV multiplied by one plus R power of T. Now we call present value, you reverse it, you take out the PV out. So when you take out the PV out, it becomes FV divided by one plus R power of T. Okay, or it could be also said, uh, mentioned as PV equals to FV multiplied by one plus R power of negative T. So these two formula is the same formula, just a different writing, different way of writing it out, and different way of looking in the scientific calculator too. So discounting is finding the present value of one or more future amount. Okay, so a future value that you're being promised uh, has a different value today. So you must discount the future value that you might get to today's value. How much do you actually get it after taking into consideration of the interest rate? So moving on, present value example here. So to count the present value questions is quite simple. This is, some, this is a sample of you know, how that it looks like. You want to begin saving for your daughter's college education and you estimate that she will need 150,000 in 17 years. If you feel confident that you can earn 8% per year, 
how much do you need to invest today? How much money do you need to invest today? You want to count the present value. All right, you need 150,000. In the future, you need $150,000. The time frame is 17 years. All right, and you are pretty sure that each year you earn around 8%. Just that's the interest rate. So how much do you need to invest today? Use and replace this component into the calculate into the formula and you can get the answer. Okay, discount rate. Often we will want to know what the implied interest rate is in investment. So discount rate means basically count the interest rate. Just now you already found out how to count the FE, you already found out how to count the PP. Now you want to count the interest rate. So still using the same formula, F V equals to P V multiplied by one plus R power of T. You change the formula out to replace it out. So you end up getting R equals to F V divided by P V power of one over T minus one. So this is how you change the formula. So if you could not remember, you cannot remember how to replace, how to convert it out. You can straight away remember this formula, R equals to F V divided by P V power of one over T minus one. Quite straightforward, quite simple, just some simple formula to remember. So the question was sounds like this. Suppose you have a one-year-old son and you want to provide 75,000 in 17 years again through his college education. You currently have 5,000 to invest. So your present value is $5,000. Your future's value is $75,000. And your time is 17 years. So what is the interest rate must you earn to have your 75,000 when you need it? Use the equation and count it. All right, please try this. I'm going to show you the answer for all these uh, questions because in the tutorial, we'll discuss in detail. So I want, what I want you to do is try to practice this with these lecture slides first and see whether can you get the figure or not. And then in the tutorial, you have different sets of questions there to compare to see whether can you get it there or not. All right, so it's not, if I show you step by step and it's now with the answers, then you won't try at all. You won't even press anything. You just look at the slides. It will not be meaningful. So please try this at home. Please uh, use your calculator wise because your calculator is a tool. If you could not use your calculator wise, you could not answer some of the questions well because uh, you will be too relying on the calculator and the calculator give you a wrong answer means the doom. All right. So periods. Ah, just now we got the PV, we got the FV, we got the rate. Now we want to find the period, which is the T. All right. To count T is a bit more complicated. You used to use the same formula, but to count, P, uh, to count T, you need to use ln. So in the end, it will be ln FV divided by PV divided by ln 1 plus R. Okay. Please remember your logs and your lons here. All right. If you don't remember this, memorize this formula. Period example will sound like this. You want to purchase a new car and you're willing to pay 20,000. If you can invest 10% 10, 10 per year and you have 15,000 now, how long will it be before you have enough money to pay cash for the car? So present value 15K, future value 20,000. Interest rate 10%. So how long is this uh, take, gonna take you before you have sufficient money to reach your goal? Use the formula, formula is given to you again. <coughs> So moving on, this is a multiple cash flow. What is a multiple cash flow? So all this while we're talking about single cash flow, when we talk about multiple cash flow, that means money coming in in different stages and different values. Okay? And uh, each, each uh, period of time, the money coming in is a different value. So for, for example, uh, you can deposit $4,000 at the end of each of the next three years at 8%. So every year for the next three years, we get $4,000. You currently have $7,000. How much will you have in three years' time? Okay, so it's compounded every year. You have, uh, uh, you will have uh, what do you call it? The money coming in. So currently you deposit four thousand dollar. So this four thousand dollar you want to count it in the future value. What part? What is the value it is? All right, the present value is four thousand now. The interest is eight percent. Okay. And for the, after for next three years, how much is it? So a compounding period of three years. All right. And then every month, you, uh, every year, you somehow receive another 4,000. So you know, I think in consideration of the cash flow coming in every single year in the time period, frame time. Okay. So how does it look like?
wait um okay so let's see so just now we mentioned within the time frame uh, oops in the time frame Year one, year one, year two, year three, and year four. Okay, so currently you have seven thousand dollar. Each year you receive how much? Let's look at the question. Each year, how much are you receiving? So currently you can deposit four k. At the end of each year for three years, at eight percent, you currently have seven thousand. So interest rate is eight percent. So in three years, how much will you have? Each year, three k. No money coming in. Your interest is eight percent. So you need to count how much of money you have on the third year. Three years on the third year, use the present value formula FV equals to present value times one plus R power of T. So the first value will be 7000 times one plus R, which is 0 0.08 power of T. Three years. So the total of all these three years, how much would it be? Plus, okay. 3000 1.08 power of 2 because only 2 times plus 3000 power of 1 and power of 0 this is 3000 itself power of 1 and plus 3000 so what is the value so this is for new year 3 if it's for new year 4 this one will be power of 4 power of 3 power of 2 another one Power of one, and lastly, nothing here. So no income coming in. So what is the total there? So this is how you don't count multiple cash flow. Please try this. We will discuss this in the tutorial later on. All right. Okay. So multiple cash flow tools. Example two. Suppose you invest five hundred dollar in a mutual fund today and six hundred in one year. If the funds pay 9% annually, how much will you have in two years? All right, you're investing 500 in a mutual fund today, $500 in the first PV, okay? The first PV here, the first PV is 500. One plus R interest rate is 9%. T is multiplied by one. How much will you have in two years? Okay, our power of two, sorry, power of two. And then this is in the second year. In the second year, you get $600 plus uh, 600 for PV plus 1 plus R is 0 0.09 and your T is 1 here. So it's 2 is 1. Alright, this is compounded 2 years. This is compounded only 1 year. Alright, so basically this is, that's all for this quick cut tutorial. It's a pretty simple one, pretty short one. Go to you having your uh, mid test next week. So I don't want to make you guys uh, be too stressed about it. So please uh, look at the tutorial questions on the on the on times being uploaded and try to attempt it as uh next week in the gonna be no class so we're gonna have a tutorial a recorded tutorial that instead as a replacement
All right, if you have any issues, please uh, come and contact me by email. And uh, good luck for your mid-test. <laughs>